on y'all's website, uh, there's a great picture that has um, uh, three, three different folks, and there's a fence. And when we're talking about uh, equity compared to just equality, we had, they, they've got folks who are, they, they're each standing on a box. And so two people can see over the fence. The third person still can't. And so uh, I was like really thinking about how are we talking about resources? And how are we talking about what does equity really mean? So that everybody has an opportunity to see and participate with what's going on. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nathaniel. Please give a warm welcome to Nathaniel. I tell you, it's, uh, well, first of all, good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope everyone had a good breakfast and, and, and got up uh, with uh, good energy uh, and, and a willingness uh, to move forward collectively uh, for the type of change that we need to see um, in the community. Um, before I provide my comments, I do want to take the time uh, to acknowledge a dear friend uh, Susan Kidd, who I, from my understanding, welcomes you this morning. Um, Susan has been a, a dear friend and a co-laborer um, in this work for a long, long time with me, and a, and a teacher of mine as well. I, I was not always an avid environmentalist, so to speak. Um, and Susan really played a key role in helping me to understand how we're all connected as it relates to the work that needs to be required for us to move forward. Um, I also want to take the time, and, and I think this gives me a great opportunity to enter into my conversation with you, and I'm not sure whether there's time built in uh, for the question and answers, but, but I also have to, because of where we are um, as it pertains to the state, um, to acknowledge another key leader uh, who sacrificed himself so we can have an opportunity to sit in a room and have this conversation. And that is a man by the name of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Who uh, grew up not too far from here um, on Auburn Avenue. Um, and he's also buried not too far from here. Um, Dr. King had a saying, a mantra, so to speak, that he created through his intellectual pursuits and the readings that he learned, that he had a chance to take in, uh, this idea of what he called the network of mutuality. That this belief that we are, we are rather, uh, bound by a single garment of destiny. That what affects one person directly affects us all indirectly. What does that mean? It means that in a smaller micro sense, uh, what happens on the south side does affect what happens on the north side. Uh, what happens on the east side affects what happens on the west side. For this conversation around climate, I would encourage you to embed King's idea of the network of mutuality within the context of the work that you are doing. I would submit to you that the achievements that you want to realize in this space around climate challenges, the climate challenges we're facing, will not happen unless you also embed the conversation around climate justice. Climate action cannot be fully realized without climate justice. I will say that for a third time, because I think it's really important to understand that. You know, when we talk about issues around creating new energy options, or creating opportunities for individuals to live in a cleaner environment, we also have to acknowledge the fact that all communities are not created equal as relates to the opportunities to, to, to live in, in, in a, and receive the type of um, encouragement and support that is required for them to even show up for a citizen climate lobby meeting. 
What does it mean for this climate conversation to not just be a matter of life and death in the long run, but every day someone in this community is being affected by where we are today? Whether it be health challenges that certain people face around asthma, whether it be the challenges that some of our friends around the South are facing around extreme weather, whether it is are the challenges that individuals are facing who are spending well over 11% of their income on utility bills. There are individuals in Atlanta right now and in some of the places that you represent that are using their stoves to warm their houses. There are individuals who may not be here physically, but I would submit to you every seat where no one is sitting, those are the communities that I am talking about. Those are the communities that have to be involved in the work that you're doing. Policy change is important and critical, but campaigns change policy but movements change hearts. And in order to change hearts, you have to meet people where they are. And I'm gonna tell you something, whether it may be a challenge to realize this or not, but if you look around in this room, this is not the future of America. This is not the future of America. I mean, it's fine to be in rooms with the people that you're comfortable with, but it's gonna be important for you to be willing to reach towards common and com uncommon allies who are willing to stand shoulder to shoulder with you to advance this agenda. Being right doesn't make or create a requirement for you to win. Just because you're right doesn't mean that you'll win. So you have to create those opportunities to engage in communities that are every day uh, experiencing the challenges associated with uh, the climate issues that you all are fighting against every day. And what does that mean? It means embracing this idea called the network of mutuality. It means embracing this understanding of equity, which is not equality. And, and the gentleman that introduced me made it very clear that equity is not equality. Equality may get you to a certain point. But if I wear a size 11 shoe, and someone in this room, who in here wears a size five? I wish I had time, a size five. I, thank goodness somebody was in the size five, I'd be bad at night. So equality would be giving everyone in this room a size five shoe. Lives on the line to ensure that they can put food on the table. Those are the type of decisions that people are making. So how do you connect with those communities? How do you create a space for these people to show up for meetings like this and feel welcome and feel as if they have something to offer? The greatest movements that we've experienced in our country and in the world have been inclusive. It has, they have created opportunities for various interests to bring their assets to the table, their passion to the table, their lens to the table, to not only help to advance, but to also inform the work that is required to be successful. Although I have not had an opportunity to sit in many of your planning meetings and conversations, I am certain that there are some blind spots, right? There are opportunities for you to get stronger as it relates to various aspects of the conversations that I have lifted up. 
the work that the Partnership for Southern Equity works to advance is about how do we begin the process of creating an ecosystem of organizations and actors that are working together to collective, collectively to advance an energy equity agenda. We have a coalition called the Just Energy Circle where we have over 20 members, 25 members now from around the state that are working to advance an energy equity agenda. We engage on the ground um, for events that we, we have called More Money, More Power, where we're actually engaging and educating low wealth communities and communities of color around the energy systems, the challenges around uh, the energy burdens that we all face, and even more important, where are the opportunities for them to engage? Your network of relationships that may not look exactly like you or come from your neighborhood, but have just as much to offer. You know, we've had an opportunity to engage in many on the policy front in many ways and on the ground. You know, one of the most exciting things that we have engaged in recently is the work with the city of Atlanta around their clean energy plan, where now they have committed to moving towards. 100% electricity, clean energy, electricity by 2030, which is a great, great, great goal. Uh, but we worked to ensure that there was a job strategy attached to it. Because if, as you move to clean energy, there are opportunities to create new jobs. These, this is another opportunity for you to engage in co with communities that need an economic transition that is just, an energy transition that is just. The health implications, implications around energy efficiency, around weatherization, all of these provide an opportunity for you to connect with various communities. Because guess what? If we're just focused on a clean energy future and the economy that we're creating is leaving just as many people behind as the economy that we're in today, then we're not doing our part a better tomorrow. If we're advancing an agenda around solar or around clean energy and it changes markets and communities where vulnerable people live and, earth, and, and, and the renewable, uh, the advancement of, of renewable energy creates the conditions for urban renewal where those same communities are pushed out of the neighborhoods that they live in because of gentrification and the market shifts that they're facing then we're not doing our job to create a just transition. So it's important. It's important for you all to be sensitive to all of these opportunities to bring people <coughs> in to your conversation, not just as the kids table at Thanksgiving. <laughs> so that is not what I am talking about. I am not talking about inviting a group of equity advocates and folks of color to sit over there while you handle the real business of the organization. We don't need any more kids' tables at Thanksgiving. We need a bigger table where everyone has a chance to work together and bring their gifts and passions to full. So a clean energy transition is critical because we have one planet to live on, y'all. But at the end of the day, if that transition is not just, then can we truly say we're environmentalists? Because we're, we are a part of the environment. That is everyone, not just the people in this room, everyone. So if you are committed to creating a cleaner environment, if you are committed to minimizing the challenges that we have around carbon issues and, and the various challenges that we face, and in particular in the South where we're number one in so many areas, whether it be the energy burden challenges or extreme weather, extreme extraction, we're number one for all the wrong reasons. But if we're serious about moving that agenda forward to undo these horrible challenges that we're facing, everybody has to be involved and everybody has to understand that through your hard work, they can benefit from your sacrifice every day to advance this agenda. Without them again, it's gonna be difficult for us to win. It's gonna be difficult. Uh, 
Um, and so I, I am, I am, of course, just looking forward to continuing to be um, supportive. Um, the Citizens Climate Lobby has been engaged in the Just Energy Circle. Um, you know, we, we have been working to advance this agenda uh, for a number of years now and also working to connect it, as I said before, to other key issues like health and our economy and how we are going to grow as a community. Um, but again, you know, I stand on the shoulders of people who have come before me like you, who have been willing to be courageous enough to care <coughs> beyond their comfort zone. And that is where the real power comes from. The ability to love someone that is not in your immediate family enough to stand even when your voice is shaking. That is what I hope you would be willing to do as you move forward to advance this agenda. Uh, the Partnership for Southern Equity will be here to be as supportive as we can um, in advancing your efforts. And even more important, being a thought partner um, and a supporter of making those hard decisions about inclusion and equity um, that are sometimes difficult to do. Um, but we're here to be as supportive as we can. Um, and, um, and I just thank you all for getting up this morning and, and working to, to, to think of ways to, to, to work together to advance an agenda um, that will make all of us better off. And I do want to take the time to commend you for all of your hard work and, and thank you so much. And uh, again, it's been an honor to, to address you this morning. Thank you.